Hey there, Nick Janitakis here. In this video, we're going to revisit the topic of setting up health checks in your web apps. So a couple of years ago, I released a video on how, in my opinion, it's a great idea to set up health checks in your web apps and then integrate them with external monitoring tools like Uptime Robot or whatever you wanna use. And the basic idea there is you can just hit this endpoint on whatever schedule that you want, maybe once a minute, every five minutes, etc., and you'll get notified if something isn't working. And it's still a great idea to do that, and the idea here is, at least when I implemented this originally, was not only would we return back just an empty response here, basically doing the bare minimum to ensure that your web app is still responding, but also to do very, very lightweight connections to whatever external resources that your app might depend on. For example, this application uses Postgres, so let's just do a select one on the database to ensure that we can connect to the database, the database user is all good to go, and we can actually read something from a table. This is a very fast operation, very efficient, and it does exactly what we want. Also, we can ping Redis here just to make sure that we're able to connect to Redis. And in the old implementation here uh, from a couple of years ago, this was the only endpoint that we had. And it would be up to you then to integrate this with whatever external monitoring serv services that you want. But this actually has a, a pretty decent flaw in my opinion. And by the way, we're looking at an example Flask app here. I've done this change here, this refactoring of what we're gonna go over to all the different example apps that I have for Rails, Django, Node, Phoenix, and Play. These are all up on GitHub. I'll leave links to them in the description. Each one has a single commit here that just goes over the diff of uh, what we're gonna go over here. I understand I scrolled very fast. Wasn't meant to read that, but going back here, uh, yeah. Uh, the original way of doing this is I just had a single um, healthy endpoint or an up endpoint, and that was it. But now there's actually two separate ones. I also refactored things to where uh, this up blueprint in the case of Flask, or uh, now there's an up controller in Rails, etc. It, it's broken out into its own thing because instead of just having one health check endpoint, there are now two health check endpoints. And one of them just does absolutely nothing except for returning an empty response here. And for example, in the Rails case here, just returns a head okay, uh, the absolute like bare minimum amount of work. And you know we, we can see here too, we're doing very similar select one and uh, pinging Redis here with Rails, different syntax, different web framework, but same exact concept here. And you know for Django, we've got this set up as well. And then for Node, also set up as well. And for Phoenix, set up as well. Um, and yeah, okay. But why? Why separate them out? Isn't it a good idea to like always make sure that things can connect? And the answer to that one is maybe not, depending on how you have your application hosted. So this place that I'm doing work at now, we have a Kubernetes cluster and things get a little bit interesting in this case when you're running multiple copies of your application and they can come and go basically as you please. And uh, Kubernetes has multiple different ways to do these different probing or health checks against your containers. And, you know, some of them will restart the application container if the health check fails. Other times it'll just keep the container up and running, but it'll take it out of the load balancer. So new traffic or any traffic can't be sent to it, but it would still be considered unhealthy. And uh, you know, there's another one, the startup probe, uh, a little bit different than the other two. I don't know, I don't, I don't wanna get side topic on like Kubernetes probes, like maybe I'll do a video on that one in the future. But long story short, we can end up in some pretty big trouble kinda if you just do this type of health check for all of your different probes. Because in this case here, let's just say for argument's sake that Redis can't be connected to for whatever reason. Uh, maybe Redis went down for a minute or something like that, or maybe even less, maybe just a blip for like 10 seconds. and. If your health check will hit this endpoint every five seconds or 10 seconds or whatever, and it happens to see that Redis isn't available, then if you're using something like a uh, liveness probe in Kubernetes, that will actually trigger your application to get restart. So imagine that you have something like five copies of uh, your application and you have like three services running like three applications so you know you have 15 containers that are all running doing their own thing and you know suddenly redis isn't available for 10 seconds that's going to trigger a restart for all 15 containers in like a rolling update fashion there just to like continuously try to connect to redis and fail continuously try to connect to redis and fail and get stuck basically in uh, like a cascading reload loop or something like that and uh that's not good, right? And it's not only the case of something like Redis going down, uh, you know, it could happen for your database. It could happen if you have, let's say, you know, two microservices and one service calls the other one and the other one just happens to be down for whatever reason. Uh, there are a lot of cases. I mean, 
It can even be a case of, let's say that you have your cluster up and running on AWS or whatever platform that you have, and it doesn't even matter you know, where you're hosting it, but let's say you're doing some changes to your networking setup. Like maybe you are trying to set up something like VPC peering and you get the peering uh, incorrect or something like that. And it just severs the connection between two, two services temporarily for like a minute. Like why should your containers get restart because of an external network uh, connection being lost through things outside the control of the application. So in that case though, if you know, if you're using Kubernetes like uh, liveness probes, it would be a really good idea maybe just to use this one here, just to determine if the web application is running. Let's not worry about connecting to any external services here. And uh, that'll be that. Then uh, for the readiness probe, then you can potentially use this one here, where in this case, it would, you would be going to uh, slash up slash databases. And then if uh, the readiness one fails, then it maybe gets taken out of the load balancer. And um, you know if that happens for a long enough period of time, if you have no applications in the load balancer, you can, you can always serve like a, a default application where you've got many different op options basically. And that's not gonna restart your containers, which is very nice. You can also use a starter probe just to have it checked that the first time it starts. Like lots of good options here, but uh, that is the reason why I separated these things out into their own endpoints. And, you know, if you have a service that calls like four other internal services, maybe you make another one called like, I don't know, like internal apps or apps or whatever you want to want, uh, whatever you, one you want to make. Or maybe you have like a slash up slash all, which does both connecting for databases and your internal services. You know, I probably wouldn't go as far as connecting to external services, like if you're using like a Stripes API or something like that, because now we're talking about third party API calls over uh, you know, a public network where you can't really control latency there. That could be a little bit weird to have happen in a health check, but for internal services over your local network that your application depends on, pretty good idea to have this stuff set up. Or maybe you just decide to always do this type of health check and you just have this URL available for you to check when you're about to make something like a VPC peering, like networking change or something like that, just so you have a test on demand to test connectivity. And uh, yeah, so all these applications, they are uh, refactored here to have a proper health check up controller or whatever you want to name it. And uh, I think moving forward, that is the way I'm going to move uh, on this because I'm definitely in production now doing this type of thing now where, yeah, we just have the two set up here and they're individually being called for different readiness checks or uh, health checks. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, let me know in the comments below, below balloon. <laughs> let me know in the comments below what your opinion is when it comes to setting up health checks in your web apps. Uh, it would be really nice to hear about that one. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up because it really helps. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.